Okay, this is just a really quick follow-up video. I mentioned in my previous LX Draw video where I got this thing working and finally managed to demonstrate it that I had to do a little bit of tinkering. I thought it might actually be useful to people if I just go over all the things I had to do here to get this working because it might be of help to somebody else who's bought one of these kits and is experiencing the same problems as I am. So let's just run down on the mechanical tinkering I had to do first. Okay, well firstly these screws here that fix these two plates together, you mustn't over tighten these. They, they feel like they ought to be tightened a li little bit more, but actually what's happened here is these spaces in between the two plates are not quite long enough. And if, you're, if you tighten these screws as fully as they seem to need to be tightened, what happens is these two pairs of linear bearings that uh, rest on top of each other which you can just see inside there. They go out of alignment and what you'll find then is this carriage doesn't move very freely in the X and Y directions. It kind of goes gritty and it feels like it's jamming on the rods. So what I found is I assembled it all and then I just backed off these screws a tiny little bit until it freed up and at that point it moved much more smoothly and freely. The next thing is the belt. The instruction manual tends to imply that you assemble the bottom part of this plate with the bearings, then you fit the belt, and then you put the top plate on. That's actually impossible to do. And so what I found that you need to do is actually assemble the whole plate and the rods and the bearings, and then actually just thread the belt through from front to back, round the little wheel at the front, and back through and then pull these two sides out and loop them onto the stepper motors here and then it's quite easy just to pull these two ends tight and tighten down this thumb wheel to lock off the belt. In terms of tension for the belt that is about what seems to work. So it's just about tight enough to twang when it's plucked but it's not it's not rock hard tension there. The pen lifting mechanism. I'm not sure if I've actually assembled this right because I was talking to somebody else who's got theirs assembled so that the servo pushes the pen down and actually they've had to fit a spring in there to return the pen to the upright position. I'll show you how, how I've actually fitted mine because I can just drop these rods out of here and the pen mechanism will come out. And so I've actually turned my servo so the spindle is on the right hand side there, the servo horn is there, and then I moved this screw so that that screw sits on top of the, the servo horn there. When the pen servo turns, the, this pen mechanism drops, and then all I need to do is add a bit of weight onto the pen which presses it against the paper, and the, the servo will either lift that off the paper or gravity will push it back down. I did find that these rods, which fit into these linear bearings on the pen carriage, are just a little bit poorly engineered, I don't know, perhaps a little bit rough and perhaps not perfectly smooth. And so all I did with these rods, to make them work a tiny bit better, I just got an 8B pencil, which is essentially nearly pure graphite, and I just rubbed it on these rods and then they slipped much easier inside their bearings. It was just sticking a little bit on some of the travel, but a little bit of graphite on there solved the problems. The cable restraints for the servo wire, not documented at all in the instructions, but I figured out from watching the video that I think this one is meant to bolt onto there and across to the central bolt of the carriage there, and then the second one bolts onto here and the right angle part bolts onto the front face of the plate here. It's not really all that brilliant a way of keeping the cables completely raised, but it does keep them out of the way of getting tangled up in the mechanism. So that wasn't detailed in the instructions at all, but that's, that's how I've done it and it seems to work. So I think that's all of the mechanical problems that I had, or mechanical challenges and tinkering I had to do. There were a few bits and pieces with the software as well. In terms of tinkering to get the software and firmware running, I had to download this thing called Elexrom here, which is 
a little ROM utility for just updating the firmware and there's a program there called Alex ROM that you run and you choose your device and it's Alexdraw Pro or, or standard Alexdraw. The machine has to be connected. When you select it, it will detect and load the appropriate firmware for the controller. Up until I did that, the XY wasn't working. It was, it was not working on core XY. There's nowhere to close that application. You have to kill it on the taskbar down here. So the other thing is that this Alexrom didn't even work out the box. I had to go and get this library called libusb0. So I managed to download that from SourceForge. I had to rename it libusb0 because it was called libusb0 underscore 32 or something and it wouldn't have worked. So I had to rename it, put it in the same folder here as LXROM and then LXROM worked okay. Up until that point it just wasn't actually connecting to the controller device and it was producing an unhandled exception. The LXCAM application itself has to be run as administrator. That was the reason I was having all the unhandled exceptions when I was running this before and so you have to go and find the executable set it to run go into compatibility set it to run as administrator and then it works okay the most important thing for me was this which is the thing that made the difference between the servo working and not working you have to connect the device you have to go down to this little box here where it says input G code where you can send a manual G code directly to the device and I just put A1 in there and sent it and that switched it from laser to servo mode and that's what made the servo work. Obvious when you know how, utterly obscure if you don't. I found that on the forum. I'll put a link in the video description to the forum and to the places where you can get the resources to download the LX ROM and the extra DLLs that you'll need to make this work. The one final thing, you can't immediately load an SVG file, it just fails. And again, here I had to go and find a DLL for it and put that in the right folder. I'll put details in the description as to what you need to do there. It needs to go in the same program folder as the AlexDraw application. I'll put links in the video description to all these files and resources, which hopefully will help you get yours working if you're experiencing any of the same troubles I did. So, sorry that's a bit boring, but I thought that might help. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.